Syngman Rhee stayed in power until about 1960. He was not a terribly popular president. He never really had that strong of a Korean base. He mostly stayed in power because of the backing of the United States. And because of this, he became to increasingly use violence and dictatorial methods to maintain his power, including fixing the 1960 election. Because of the broad anti re sentiments in society in 1960, there were massive protests against him, and he resigned his position uh, as president, and a new republic, the Second Republic, was established in Korea. This lasted only a short time. The, the, the government was truly democratic, but it was also very weak, and people were very concerned about security issues, especially because North Korea, there was always a fear that it would invade again. So in 1961, a military coup led by this man wearing sunglasses here, General Park Chung-hee, overthrew this government and established a military dictatorship on the grounds of um, promising to bring security and also to be strongly anti-communist. And so he actually enjoyed a large no amount of support because of the problems during the Rhee regime and then during the Second Republic. In particular, President Park, or I'm sorry, he was a dictator at this time, he eventually became um, president through, through having elections, which at first were fairly fair, but over time became increasingly unfair. Religiously speaking, he was a Buddhist, and his wife was, in fact, a very devout Buddhist and very supportive of Buddhism, and a very charismatic woman. And so he enjoyed broad support from Buddhists because of this support. Moreover, that, that he gave them, Christians also were very supportive of him. Uh, for one thing, Christians tend not to be very favorable towards communism. They were attracted by his anti-communist platform. And the reason, of course, they're not too supportive of communism is because Christianity doesn't do all that well <laughs> under communist regimes, as we discussed a little bit in terms of North Korea. Moreover, one thing to to keep in mind is that most of the Christians actually were from North Korea and had been forced to flee when the communist state uh, was established and took over and took repressive measures against them. So they were northerners who fled south. Many, in fact, were from Pyongyang, the, the capital now of, of the Re Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And then, uh, in the 1920s and 1930s and previously, there had been so many Christians in Pyongyang, Protestant Christians, that it was known as the Jerusalem of the East. And so these people fled south when the communists took over, and of course they were fiercely anti-communist because they'd been driven out. But at the same time, as Pak, uh, he, he moved from being a military dictator to being a president, and then increasingly became more and more dictatorial as time went on, and so he re repressed freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and had uh, people who, uh, dissidents, um, and pro-democracy dissidents, dissidents or anti-government people, he would have tortured and sometimes even executed on trumped-up charges. So there was a... Freedom was, was a lot of times going down, especially into the 70s. Park would stay in power until 1978, when he was assassinated. Then a new uh, military dictator by the name of Chen Du Huan would take over. And then he would rule as military dictator until 1988. And he was also uh, a Buddhist and seems to have given some support, though not, not entirely as much as uh, Pak Chung-hee and his wife did to Buddhism. So Pak, and to a lesser extent the other, his uh, uh, Chen Du-hwan, his successor as a military dictator, enjoyed a lot of support from religious believers, especially Buddhists and Christians. But he also had to work hard to maintain the support. So, for example, as I alluded to earlier, he, he and especially his wife would give public support to Buddhism, for example, sponsoring Buddhist or, or speeches by famous Buddhist monks. Um, and he would also have prayer breakfasts where he would meet with important Christian leaders and give them recognition for their support and let them know what he wanted them to continue doing to support him and his anti-communism. And so because of this, he had to give religious organizations a certain amount of religious freedom in order to keep their support. Moreover, 
for security and economic reasons he was dependent on the United States and for international assistance as well and he didn't need um, more cri possible criticisms um, again about his regime in regards to human rights so he tended to leave religion alone as much as possible then because he didn't want want to be criticized and you know if, if Korea and he have a bad image then that will make it difficult to get the the international support he needs to keep the economy humming and to keep the country safe so he has to allow certain space for religion and at least pay lip service to the idea of religious freedom and so what this meant was that religious people who opposed the state that opposed the dictatorship could organize around political and social issues but make religious organizations religious associations to do this so for example the urban industrial mission the UIM was a was a Protestant Christian organization mostly but they um, worked among factory workers to unionize them and the government couldn't be as strict with them as it would have liked couldn't be as harsh with them as it was with other union organizers because they were religious and Protestant Christians proved to be very effective at this because they still maintained ties with their um, with the churches that had initially sent missionaries and these were predominantly English speaking missionaries and churches mostly from the United States which was the main supporter and ally of South Korea so because of that when there was a problem uh, when there were issues regarding either Protestant Christianity or causes that Protestant Christians favored uh, these progressive causes that were, were against the government and so forth they would um, be able to call on their allies in the United States or the International Council of Churches or wherever and get them to put public pressure on Korea or the Korean government in order to to bring hum in human rights abuses and so forth and it wasn't just Protestant Christians they were Catholics and Buddhists and other religious believers also involved but especially Protestant Christians because these connections were extremely important and because of this then as a whole religious organizations played an important part in ending the dictatorship and promoting democracy and human rights because they had a certain space in which they could operate to criticize uh, the government and to work for reform what's what I should stress though is religion was not connected to any one political view there were conservative Buddhists there were progressive Buddhists there were conservative Christians who because they were so anti-communist would support the state whereas there were more uh, progressive Christians who would argue that uh, the, that the anti-communism um, too fervent of anti-communism would harm r human rights and so they needed to resist so you had religious believers weren't necessarily connected to any one political perspective and you can kind of see in this picture here visibly this what religion was able to do this is Pak Chung Hee meeting with the f uh, famous and, and recently deceased Cardinal Kim Soo Hwan, uh, Stephen Kim. In this meeting in the 70s, Cardinal Kim was able to criticize Pak politely, but able to criticize him in a way that other people weren't able to. And he was able to do this and to act as a leader um, in the democracy movement and to resist the, the government and its human rights abuses because he was a Catholic cardinal and because, in that sense, because he was such an important religious leader, he was inviolable and couldn't be touched by the government. And so because of this then the religious organizations played an important role um, in democratization and the establishment of human rights. So what about religion and politics today in South Korea? Well there's a lot of religious freedom in South Korea so there tends to be a lot of connection and activity of religious people in politics and and in social issues as well. And one example of this is the Mad Cow Disease protest um, I actually was in Korea when these broke out in 2008 and basically what happened was that there were suspicions that the United States was sending beef that we wouldn't sell in our own markets that was thought to be contaminated or, or possibly contaminated with mad cow disease to Korea and this led to massive protests it actually turned out that this wasn't happening that, that the beef was not tainted and that we weren't selling um, beef that we weren't eating ourselves but this at the time people this wasn't known so there were these massive protests and they got a little rowdy and so the, the government wanted to arrest some of the protesters 
Well, these protesters fled to Chogesa and sought sanctuary. And Chogesa is the head temple located in Seoul of the largest Buddhist um, organization in Korea, Chogechong. And so they, they sought sanctuary there. And the government did not want to send police officers to go into the temple and arrest them. So they, they just stayed in the temple precincts. There was a thought, the, there were some concerns, I guess, that the some of them were being snuck in or out of the temple. So one day when the abbot's car, the head of the temple, was being brought, was uh, coming in, the government actually searched his car. And this led to a lot of Buddhist protests against the government because this was seen as disrespectful towards the abbot's car. Or, I'm sorry, not towards the abbot's car, but toward the abbot and towards Buddhism itself. Well, it's a, this at first seems a little... Um, Little, kind of a strong reaction, but it makes sense when we look at the fact about who was president at the time, was, and, and who is still president today, is a man named Im Young Bak. And President Yi is a, is a, a conservative, he's pro-American, and he's a very devout Protestant Christian, and in the past had been connected to people who were very critical of Buddhism, or who, did not, who were deemed by Buddhists as not showing their religion proper respect, and because of this he was frequently criticized, and every now and then there would be an incident where um, something would happen that would make it seem like the government was not paying proper respect to, to Buddhism, and, and many Buddhists were upset by this. And because of this then, this incident, President Yi actually apologized because the, the car had been searched. So in this case, it's interesting, religious people were able to, to gather together and actually get the government to, to apologize to them because of the way one of their leaders had been treated. So we can say there's a lot of religious freedom 